just want to write a song about a boy and a girl. So let's take a look at VOR, very high frequency omnidirectional range. Very high frequency omnidirectional range. This shows the aircraft's position relative to the VOR radial. So you have a VOR station, and if you have an aircraft over in this location, then um, we can use our indicator to help figure out exactly where you are with respect to this. So it helps give you a position. It's commonly used in aircraft, but it's um, also being replaced by GPS because that gives you an instantaneous location without having to tune any dials and it's just a point on a map, so it's a lot easier to use. Magnetic North is the basis for all navigation and only reference direction is determined with the vacuum system, which we're not going to take a look at here, but Magnetic North is also accurate during an electrical failure, which is why it is so useful to still have that compass and still be able to operate a VOR. Because if there's an electrical fail in your air, failure in your aircraft, um, depending on how your GPS system is, um, is powered, you may not have access to that. But with VOR, you can still navigate. And so that's one of the main reasons that you want to have um, use and know how to use VOR. There are some downsides to this. Let's take a look at the benefits first. There's multiple stations. Uh, VOR is all over the United States, so there's great cross-checks. Um, very little interference. You can make straight-line courses. Uh, if you drift because of wind, it automatically lets you know you're off your course. Um, and it works regardless of, of which way the plane is located or oriented. Um, you can always know exactly where that VOR station is. Uh, its limitations is they're all still ground-based transmitters um, rather than GPS being in space. Uh, you have to have line of sight. Uh, VHF is what it runs off of. So there need to be a lot of them so that you can make sure you can always connect to one. Um, there is limited range if you're at low altitude because, again, it has to have line of sight. So if there's things in the way, it's not going to work. Um, and this is actually really important to know that when you are taking off in your flight simulator, it's not going to work right away because it's at a low altitude. You need to be up in the air for a little bit. Use your map to try to figure out where you need to point yourself at which bearing, and then you can turn on your VOR and try to figure out how to navigate using that. And again, there's also limited range at higher altitudes, um, so it's kind of uh, got a limited area that they use these. So these are some different symbols that you might see. This is just a VHS um, VOR station. It's a Vortac for military purposes. This has a distance measuring equipment in it, so it gives you how far away you are. So a few different symbols, you might want to note these down. So when you look in your maps, they're a little bit easier. So we have a VOR sectional chart. This kind of shows you a little bit about what you're going to be looking at. And right here is the DME. You can see that VOR DME. It has that rectangle around it that has a direction or distance measuring equipment there. And then these blue um, colored compass rows um, shows the magnetic direction of the radials and how they're transmitted. Uh, really what we're more concerned with at this point is we're taking a look at where these stations are. That's going to help us. So some examples of what the ground equipment might look like. And airborne equipment usually on the vertical stabilizer. It's kind of this V-shaped piece. That's where you're going to find the VOR antenna on the aircraft. And VOR instruments operate when they're tuned to that frequency. So remember we were talking about tuning your navigation 1 or navigation 2 to those um, stations. So you typically tune them to two VOR stations to cross-check. And then you have actually two VOR navigational compasses too. So you'd have a nav 1 that you're going from and a nav 2 that you're going to. Um, or something like that. So here's your nav 1, here's your nav 2, and so you're going to have two compasses that are pointing to those. So let's look at that a little bit more closely. If you set your VOR Omni Bearing Selector, the OBS knob, um, radial, then you can use that to tune where you want to go to. The sky is divided into to and from sections and left and right sections, so we're going to is forwards, from is backwards, and then you have your left and right. Left of the station, right of the station, um, and so on. Now it depends on which direction you're going. If you're traveling 180, then that's 2, and this is 360 is from, and 270 is right, and 90 is left. So it kind of depends on um, which way you set your VOR to. So let's take a look at some specifics right now. So if we are tracking on from this VOR station here, and we have tuned it into this line, this 300 degree line, and we're actually flying on 305, it says, hey, you need to go left. So you see the needle has swung to left. It says, you're off course, go left. This one says, you're really off course, go really far left, because you're starting to veer off a lot from this marker. So that's what the purpose is. That's what it's doing. So again, we have it as 300 degrees, 30, with there's an extra zero. 
and we're, we're perfectly in line. Now, right here, it indicates that we're off. We're about four degrees right of the selected course. Each one of these dots represents about two degrees. Um, so that would be more like you're on this plane. So we are, we need to go left to get back on that course. So let's take a look at some examples. These are a little bit tricky. One thing you really need to make um, sure that you note is that the orientation that it says, it looks like it's facing this way, does not matter at all. The VOR station has no way of knowing where your plane is actually facing. So if we look at A, A says from, I can see that the, the needle's on the bottom, it says from zero degrees. Now the reason it says that is from means you, you go from the VOR to the plane. So from VOR to the plane is zero degrees, and I am right on that line. So that's perfect. It doesn't matter which way I'm facing. But in a couple seconds, I'm actually going to be to the right of that from line, of this vertical line, and this needle's going to swing left saying, hey, go left, go left, which in this case is go backwards and go back on that line. So let's look at B. B is, says it's going to, and it says 180 degrees. It's an 18 there. So I'm going to 180. It doesn't matter again which way this is pointing. If if we're pointing at this and we're lined at the 180 degree, then I am veered off to the left of it. So I need to go right. So this should show to the right, and it does. It says swing to the right a lot so that the plane is on this line going straight down. And that would mean that you'd have to turn your aircraft to to correct it to go down. C says it's going to, and this one says 270 degrees. So if we're going to the VOR station, at 270 degrees, this aircraft here, to this VOR station, then we need to be left on this line. And that one's kind of tricky because it's facing the wrong way. But again, pretend that it's just a dot on here and not an actual airplane. I understand that it's going away from the station, but you have tuned it to say going to the station. And you can tune it to do that, either to or from. So to the station at 27 degrees, we need to go left to be on that line. D says going to the station at 270 degrees, we are dead on. We're right on that line, so that's good. E, if we're going from the station at 27 degrees, then we need to, from the station, again from, we need to go left to get back on this line. Again, don't look at which way it's pointing. Left gets you back left on that line. G says from the station at 180 degrees, so from here, from this going 180 degrees is on G, we are really, really far um, to the right, we need to go left. So from this station, this plane needs to swing left to get back on that 180 degree mark. So it's trying to go this way, it's swung way left, and you can see that left here. F, from the VOR, and it's at 180 degrees, so from VOR, 180 degrees, we're dead on, even though we're not going the right direction if we're trying to go from there. And last is E. E is, says it's about um, 13 or 14 degrees is where we're kind of lined up to. And you can see that right there, 13 or 14 degrees, from the station, we're dead on that line, which is why it's right in the middle. So all these stuff is just giving an indication as to where you are. You can use it to navigate to the station or away from it, but um, a lot of times just used to point out where you are. Let's take a look at these here. You can see that um, in this position here, if we're traveling um, to this VOR on the 120 line, we're dead on going to it. Here we are on this 120 degree line going from it, we're still dead on. Over here, we need to swing way to the right, but we're not going to or from, it says it's right on the line, you're, you're even with it. And that's what this little candy cane striped line is in here. So to determine your present location from a VOR station, you tune in the station and turn the OBS knob until the CDI needle centers with a from direction. So we're gonna tune this OBS knob. And right now my aircraft is at about this 120 degree um, line here. So I'm tuning it. Um, I don't actually know exactly where I am, but I tune it until I'm perfectly in line here and it says from. And now I know I am at a 120 degree radial from this station. So that's how you get your exact position. 
you just tune this knob, you know where this position is, and you keep turning this knob until the line goes straight up and down, and it says from. And then whatever that says, says up 12 or 120, then you can draw a line on your map from here straight out, and you know that you're on that line somewhere. Now if it has distance measuring equipment, then you can say, okay, I'm on this line, and I'm 12 nautical miles from it, so now I know my position exactly. And so on this one is a little bit different. If you want to set it to, you just turn your knob until it says to, wait until the line is right in the middle. And I know that on a 300 degree, which is 300 degree right here, that's pointing straight to that VOR. So either to or from, you just need to know which one you're taking a look at. So here's how you might use that. If you are flying from here, you're going to this waypoint. So we have it set at 170 degrees, and we wait until our needle reads right dead center so that we're at 170 degrees and as soon as it reads that we know we've hit that waypoint. Um, before that it says you're going to need to go right because from this VOR station we're to the left of this point based off where magnetic north is so we need to go to the right and we're actually flying in that direction so then that needle will go to center and as soon as that needle is center you know you've hit that waypoint and now it's going to veer off and then you change channels to the next one and it's going to say, hey, you're left of me. And then you, until you get to the center, and then, hey, you're right of me, and so on and so on, until you keep going from waypoint to waypoint. Uh, another example of how you might use this is if you're traveling to this VOR station exactly, um, because then you might want to go to it and then travel to another one, maybe down here. Then we have it set, we have it tuned to initially to about 70 degrees, which is right around on this radian here. We have it tuned to 70 degrees, but we see some clouds up ahead. Oh, no. So then we veer off at a 45-degree angle. We just chill out for a second. We let ourselves fly around this. And while we're flying at this angle, we retune the VOR to 90 degrees. As soon as you do that, it's going to say, hey, holy cow, you are way too far to the right of this 90-degree line. So you need to go left, which is really what you're doing because you're intercepting that. But pretty soon, that needle is going to swing to the center, which tells you, Okay, you're good. So now that you have to kind of correct your airplane and make sure you're traveling um, straight towards that 90 degree um, location. And that's going to get you back on track right towards this VOR. So another example of it, if you are too far to the right, your needle should be pointing to the left. And you can follow this along. And you can see how the needle is kind of swinging. If you're tuned in to zero degrees on this VOR and you're going to this VOR. Me